This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to level up your email marketing game, but you're not sure how to fully take advantage of the power of emails, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us how to build the most important automation flows so that you can grow your sales with email marketing on autopilot. I'm joined today by Andrew Maffeton with over 15 years of experience in the e-commerce marketing industry. And he has worked in-house with multiple eight-figure brands and exited an agency focused on scaling Amazon brands. So he is now the founder and CEO of Blue Tasker, a full service marketing company for e-commerce sellers that develops omni-channel strategies for brands on multiple sales channels, as well as the host of the Ecom Show podcast and the co-author of the Click and Conversion newsletter. Hey Andrew, welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Appreciate it. Nice, nice. So uh, we were talking in our in our conversation before about email marketing and how you guys built uh, this nice, well done, um, and obviously tested for conversion uh, automation flows. So um, as you, uh, as people know in this, in this podcast, uh, guests always share some sort of uh, downloadable material. So this time, Andrew is sharing a, um, a list of the uh, the automation flows that we're going to discuss about. Obviously, we we're only able to cover a few of them because there there's so many. But uh, I encourage you guys to go download the, the full list at the sellerprocess.com, or you will find um, the link in the YouTube video description. So let's start, Andrew, with um, setting up the um, expectations right. I would say. So uh, why do we suggest? Why why should you? Um, suggest you know Amazon sellers uh, to work on email marketing. What can they expect if they do it right? Yeah, so email with Amazon sellers is always very interesting, right? Because if we're discussing emailing people directly out of the Amazon platform, there's very limited ways that you can do that. But from an off Amazon perspective, there's a lot of different ways. So uh, the the PDF that we uh, sent over, you know, there's a lot of information there. It's it's very specific to Klaviyo. We're Klaviyo partners, so it's what we catered to, but it actually is still relevant for many other platforms. But effectively what it is, it's 18 or 19 different flows that we itemized that are basically very specific to anything really. It, it, there's many different areas and with automation and, and email, really what it is about being at the right place at the right time. So every time a user or a customer triggers doing something, literally anything, there's probably a reason for you to go ahead and email them. So there's countless ways that you could really think about. We came up with 19 of them, but really we wanted to limit it without it being too overwhelming. And what we did is we... the what we found was the interesting part was we did all these different screenshots of how to actually set it up and what it looks like within the platform because that's a lot of the biggest problem. But from an Amazon perspective, what really happens is how do you grow your email list from an off Amazon side? And I'm a big fan of diversification, right? Being so reliant on just Amazon can be difficult. And if you're going to exit, anyone who's got assets outside of their typical you know, FBA business can always exit at a higher multiple. So having an asset like an email list can be very beneficial. And what happens a lot as well is when these Amazon sellers are you know, launching new product, you launch a new product, it's like almost starting a new business. You've got that 30 to 60 day like kind of grace period of the new product where Amazon will you know, rank you a little bit better so that you can try to start get some of that motion, some of that traction that you want to get. From an email perspective, though, if you had a nice email list and you were to send you know, some kind of incentive to your existing list over to that new product, then what would happen is you can actually benefit from that initial honeymoon period and really start to see your organic take off so that you kind of get that snowball effect after that 30 to 60 day period. So it's a great product launch strategy. There's also a ton of other things. Uh, if you also have your own website and you are, uh, at least in the States right now, it's available, you have Buy With Prime that integrates directly with Klaviyo. So you can actually have certain triggers based on people that you know are shopping on Amazon. And again, you can send them back to your website. You can 
have them, you know, give them a, an incentive to purchase on the site. You can give them an incentive to purchase on Amazon. You can set up an automation if it's some kind of recurring purchase. So there's so many different variables and it really kind of depends on the business. But an email list to me is like the second most important KPI outside of obviously your profitability. Having a really large active email list is an incredibly valuable thing, especially when you go to exit one day. So for any business, whether you're Shopify, Big Commerce, Magento, et cetera, or even if you're Amazon, Walmart, Chewy, it doesn't really matter. It's an incredibly valuable uh, asset. So I always recommend catering to the email side from either of those platforms. For sure, for sure. Totally agree. And I'm also a big fan of Clavio because it's it's the same that I'm using. So uh, I, I it's the one that I suggest as well. And uh, I totally agree with you when you're talking about, you know, building an asset because it's not only valuable during, you know, the, the business, you know, for launch purposes, for example, or or remarketing. And we, we're, we're going to touch a few of those strategies in, in a second. But as you said, it's going to increase the value of the company ex exponentially. Yeah. So because it, reduce, it re reduces the, the risk of the company, you know, being reliant only on Amazon traffic. So that's Definitely, it's a strategy that I'm investing more and more on. So, and uh, I can see also, you know, uh, interviewing lots of people and you know, being in the in the space through conferences and so on. I can see people are talking more about this topic nowadays. So, I think it's kind of a you know a, a channel that more and more people are looking at. Yeah. So, so you know, when we're talking about email marketing, uh, many people. Uh, have in mind you know the welcome series to to begin with right because it, it, that's usually yeah. uh you know the first flow that happens you know when people sign up so let's talk about that so what, what are your best practices about setting up a, a welcome series welcome series is like the real basic one that almost everyone has set up right away um most platforms like Clavio or mailchimp or constant contact etc like they have those pretty much pre-prepped for you so you really just have to brand it and kind of make it your own welcome series to me the best way to utilize that is not to I look at it two different ways, right? A lot of people, they'll have a pop-up on their website. Let's say it's 10% off your first order. And what they'll do is they'll immediately trigger a welcome series and the welcome series will have a discount in it. However, what I like to do is actually have a separate email with the discount from your pop-up and then let them know you have now like been brought into you know the, the email list. This way, because you can also have other areas on your website where people can sign up for your newsletter where maybe you're not giving them a discount. So instead of just giving money away all the time, Try to, you know, have six of one, half a dozen of another trying to figure out how do you want to use it. But with a welcome series, it's literally welcoming them to the email list. What's uh, Give them a little bit of insight about the business. Give them a little bit of insight about what they can expect in the emails. They, they're, you're now in their email list, so you're welcoming, welcoming them to this community of emails they're about to get. So, hey, we send out, uh, you know, promotional things once a month or... Two times a month, you're going to get some insights from our influencers or, you know, every other week expect to see a new product flavor or something that we're launching. So ex explaining to them what they just signed up for, as opposed to what you tend to see, what you tend to see is here's our top products. Please go buy them. Like that's usually what it is for the most part. I like to set it down a drip campaign. So our welcome series, we usually suggest Every brand is completely different, which I'm sure we'll touch on about like timing and things like that. But from a welcome series perspective, I do more of a drip campaign. It's usually about three emails at a start. So we test there. The first one is just welcoming them. Hello, here's what you can expect from this email, blah, blah, blah. The next one being a little bit more around like, you've been on our email list for a while. We hope you're enjoying it. You know, here's some more information for you, et cetera. Then you can go into a third one of maybe you want to have a survey. Maybe you want to know more information. How do you like our emails? Do you think they're too promotional? Do you think they're not promotional? Is there too wordy? Are they not too wordy? You could try and get down that area of actually trying to learn about what they feel about your emails. I'm not a big fan of keeping the welcome series very heavily focused on a sales side because almost every other email that you're going to put in place is focused on that. But you can sprinkle in like, here's what everyone's saying about our top products or 
every now and then change out your welcome series for here's some of the recent influencers that mentioned us or that, you know, that we're plugging certain products or, you know, obviously worded differently. But so there's, it kind of depends on the brand on the approach that you want to take, but keeping your wel welcome series more informative and just like, Hey, welcome to the group. Here's what you can expect. How are you liking it? That kind of stuff is what I always see works the best because it keeps them engaged and it keeps you learning more and more about the people on your list and potentially how to segment them further. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. And that's very interesting. Usually how many emails you said three, is it just for start or is that the whole uh, automation is just uh, three emails? Oh, I, I start off with just three um, for the welcome series. Usually it's, it's kind of just kind of like how we've like, I think three is good. It's a good spot, but usually what you want to do with automations is set them up, let them run for a while. Usually A, B test something, whether it's your subject line your snippet or, you know, CTAs within it, et cetera. But then you want to keep an eye on the very last couple emails of your list or of, of your flow. How's the open rate? How's the click rate? How's the engagement rate? If you see that they're still opening, they're still very engaged, try adding on a fourth. If they're still opening, they're still very engaged, add on a fifth and keep sending it down a further area. Now, the other thing you want to explore, though, is what is the purpose of that flow? So for a welcome series, you're welcoming them. Eventually, they're just going to start getting your traditional emails. If you keep the welcome series to a certain aspect of not trying to sell them, there's not too much that you need to convey with those. So at a certain point, you can be like, I think we're getting everything out that we want to say in the welcome series. Your abandoned cart, your upsells, your uh, customer winbacks, those, that can be very different. If you start to see like, hey, we've got eight emails in this flow and they're still engaging with it. Like, great, let's go to nine. Like there's no reason that you couldn't keep adding them on. I usually just start off with three pretty much for every flow. Got it, got it. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Good to know as a, as a benchmark. So I'm gonna now going to pick up uh, some of the the flows, some of the most interesting flows that you you mention in in your in your PDF that people can download. Uh, so um, one of them, for example, is the post purchase. You know the the thank you email, so called. How do you mm -hmm. maximize the engagement and sales opportunities for for that particular flow? So with the post purchase, there's kind of two different ways you can take that. There's, and really, again, it kind of, everything is dependent on the brand, right? But in, in some situations, you can use it as a, more of like a quick upsell of like, hey, you bought this, you might also like this. Do you want to add it on to your order that you just made? Or in other cases, if it's like a first time customer, let's say it's the first time they ever shopped with you. When you're getting that first customer, new customer acquisition is incredibly difficult. Like you get really high acquisition costs sometimes. So like you want to make sure that every single customer feels welcome and they feel special. So a lot of times what we like to do after a first customer post purchase is have almost like a letter from the founder, like give it like some personalized aspect of, you know, Hey, just wanted to reach out and say, I really appreciate you working with us. You know, I hope you like your product. If you have any issues, here's how you can reach us. Like basically just explaining to them, like throughout this entire shopping process, we've got you covered. We do the same thing for a post purchase for a repeat customer. So if they purchase for a second time, we usually do something very similar. And the reason behind that is because the second hardest thing about getting a new customer is getting them to come back. Once they come back a second time, there's a lot of statistics around like it's a little bit easier to keep them coming back. They're a lot more fresh in your head. So it it continues. But that second one, it's very similar. We'll reach out and be like, hey, we, we're so glad that you were liked working with us the first time that we just wanted to thank you again for shopping with us again. Sometimes you might want to add like a little bit of an incentive to it, but like just as a thank you, like here's 10% off your industrial order to come back a third time. Usually after the second time, we we kind of ease off the more personalized approach like from the founder sort of thing, but letting them know that you're going to take care of them throughout the entire process is what's most important. A lot of sellers, they get real, real focused on how do I get them to my website or how do I get them to Amazon or whatever, and then how do I get them to convert? And then as soon as they convert, they don't care anymore. They don't look at the post-purchase. They don't like you know, the shipping aspect, the, if it gets delayed, if it's not delayed, if it's uh, showing up too late, if it, which is the same thing, 
if it shows up damaged or, you know, if there's not enough communication while it's happened before your order shows up like that, that's such a fragile time to make sure that they enjoyed the entire experience, even after they uh, received the product. So having that post purchase can be really important to get them to come back and retain them as time goes on. Mm -hmm. 100% yeah totally agree and so let's say we we managed to to do that you know we successfully uh, turn you know first time purchasers to um, repeating customers uh, I know there are like uh, some uh, how do you call them kind of uh, tags let's say on Klaviyo or or even on Shopify where you know yeah. customers are tagged as um, like VIP or best customer right so uh, or repeating customer uh, how do we how do we make sure that we we keep we keep those customer and uh, drive more revenue and make them really loyal customers i know there there might be do, or, or do, do you use any like automation flows for those specific customers yeah so one thing you can do is you can map out what is a VIP customer to you, right? And so sometimes what you can do is you can automate them becoming a VIP customer or you can find a way to incentivize them to become a VIP customer regardless. Some people try to map out like premium plans where you, you know, you pay like a monthly fee to be a VIP customer. Some of the uh, clothes, like apparel brands do that a lot for like getting notified of a drop is coming kind of thing. Um, the other is, okay, you've spent X amount of money with us or, and, or you have placed X amount of orders with us, every brand obviously being different. And then you notify them, uh, which you can automate, which is, Hey, we just want to let you know with your recent order, you are officially one of our VIP customers. You've worked, you've shopped with us so many times. We really wanted to thank you. Here's what is, here's what being in our VIP program entails. Right. And then just let them know that you know, hey, uh, before we launch a new product, we're going to tell you first. Uh, before uh, a sale goes live, we're going to let you know ahead of time. Or before a sale goes live, which we did a little bit in Black Friday, we're going to give you your own special code so you can actually start shopping ahead of time. Or we're going to give you like a little bit of an extra percentage outside of what everyone else is getting. And this is just for you kind of thing. So you can automate the VIP aspect to let them know they're now a VIP customer and maybe give them like a, as a thank you, you know, here's X percent off. But the real thing there is how you can then segment that audience and really start to send them completely personalized emails that are specific to the VIP club that you created so that they're like, Oh, I, I love working with them. I've shopped with them so often. And now they're recognizing me as one of their best customers. So I'm getting all these extra benefits. It's kind of like a reward program, except you're just kind of forcing it into like everyone who shops with us a lot is going to get, you know, some kind of extra incentives outside of the norm. Got it. Got it. Okay. And what what would you say if we were to go on the opposite direction, right? If, you know, let's say a customer purchase just once and then they just disappear you know they're, they're so-called like win back series usually mm -hmm. like uh, how do you how do you make sure that you um engage successfully with these customers and win them back yeah win back is, can be very interesting some people don't like email right? They, maybe they get a ton of emails. They, you know, they constantly are getting spammed with stuff. So they're just constantly deleting things. If they haven't unsubscribed from you, but they also haven't purchased in a while, that's good news because you can still reach them. So what you can do in that situation is really look at, you know, how long has it been? Because obviously for every brand, you know, some brands it's like, hey, if you don't shop with us every three months, there's a problem here. Others, it's like, if we only see you once a year, that makes sense. So it kind of depends. But in in that scenario, it's it's very, it's very you, you tread lightly. You know, you may not have maybe you didn't enjoy your last experience. How can we get you to come back? Like that kind of thing. I don't like to lean with a discount. A lot of people come right out the gate with like, hey, we haven't heard you in a while. Here's twenty percent off your next order. Like I like to lean into it. Like, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, we hope you're doing well. Here's some you know here's some of our top products uh, that you may not have seen. Here's some stuff like at. Because sometimes the win back really might just be like, I completely forgot you guys existed. It's just been a long time. Life's crazy. It is what it is. So to come out the gate with a discount, you don't necessarily need to do that. Then your next offer could, it doesn't have to be really high. It could just be like a, hey, 
We hope you're doing well. We haven't seen you in a while. Um, we'd love for you to work with us again. Here's 10% off your next order. And then I kind of lean into the customer service side. Like if you had some problems last time, we'd love to speak with you about it. Here's our customer service information, that kind of stuff. Like people want to know that they can easily contact someone. So providing that is great. Then as you start to get into like your third, fourth email, et cetera, that's when you can really start to bring up the incentive to kind of get them back into the flow. But from there, what we'll usually do is that's when you can start to say like, okay, it's been a really long time since they shopped with us. They went through the entire uh, win back flow. They still haven't come back. Can I either A, segment them or B, just set up a tag that says like, you know, it's an inactive uh, profile. They're not doing anything. You can segment that out. You can suppress them in Clavio, And then that way you're not getting billed for it. Because that's something that kind of, it can add up for a while for Clavio. If you're not cleaning your list, they charge you for however many people are just sitting in there. So you can suppress them so you can still keep all the data, but you're not being charged for those emails. What I like to do is put them into an inactive list and let them sit there for like, again, each brand is going to be very different, but let's say a month and have a consistent running uh, Facebook ad on uh, that's set up for that list specifically. So you can integrate Clavio with Facebook. You connect that list to Facebook and you have a win back campaign running for let's say 30 days to try to get them to come back to the site and become active again and ideally make another purchase. Then if they don't, then I suppress them, get them out of the list and start to keep the list clean so that I'm not getting charged so much on Clavio. But I sometimes like email might not be the best way to reach that person. So I try to do it from an advertising perspective before I officially call them like completely gone. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, cool. I, I love that that tip. Uh, very interesting. So, uh, you know, we're running almost out of time. I have uh, one more question for you. I know <laughs> the um, SMS uh, integrate very well with uh, with email. So what what's your approach to to integrate both in order to, you know, drive more more revenue into the email campaigns sms can have you know amazing kpis you pretty much name the kpi sms can do fantastic the problem with sms is because you see those numbers sellers tend to get really trigger happy right they set up all these different sms messages they're sending them out all the time i mean obviously i did my fair share of shopping for the holidays and I was getting text messages left and right for like days on end. And I was like, this is ridiculous. You think of like, I like to think of text messaging kind of like uh, a little bit of a distant relative, right? Yeah. If you text me once in a while, like, hey, how you doing? You know, just wanted to give you a little bit. Of, cool. Like, hey, hope you're great. Like that kind of thing. But if you're texting me every day, you're an annoying relative. So like it gets obnoxious. So you you don't have enough going on. There's no business that's like, hey, I need to tell you something every single day. It's just not necessary. So you really have to tread lightly with SMS. I love like if you want order notifications uh, through your phone, approve it. And then that way they can get, you know, their order uh, confirmation shipping. Hey, your order showing up today, that kind of stuff. Great. Do you want to get, you know, marketing stuff from us? Like, okay, you do. Here's what we're going to send you. And I would almost lay out the cadence. I'd be like, on a monthly basis, we'll let you know of any sales that we have going on. If we release a new product, here's what we have. In some cases, depending on how you set it up as well, you can say like, here's your options on what you want to be notified for through SMS. So within Clavio, you can tag them correctly. So if they want to know everything, let them know everything. If they just want to know product launches or sales or something like, then that's all they're getting. But just sending out a message just for the sake of doing it, it can really hurt your brand and really annoy people. Like there's plenty of people that I shopped with over the holidays that I'm like, I'm not going to work with you again just because of how annoying all, like your uh, two emails and two SMS messages every day is is insane. So it's it can really hurt your brand. So I always say like, don't get greedy from those high KPIs and just tread lightly, be happy that you're getting the results you're getting, but don't overdo it because then you're going to really kill that channel that tends to be doing well for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dot, dot, I can totally see that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad to know that SMS works so well. So uh, that that's an interesting thing. I guess, I guess in the US, SMS works better than, uh, for example, in Europe, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, cause, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, it's big in, in Europe and, uh, that might, 
might be kind of the what you can compare it with yeah in yeah, europe you, exactly. you would use whatsapp yeah okay that's that's great and obviously we 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 only managed to talk about i think uh five um five of the of the automations that you listed in the um, in your pdf there are i think 19 so there are lots more a lot more uh, for you guys to to check and and learn from so make sure you download this pdf that andrew is it's sharing with us at thesellerprocess.com you will find it in the show notes or in the description of the youtube video so um, andrew if you if people are interested in working with you or learn or to learn more about um, email marketing, how can they find you? Yeah, um, me personally, as well as uh, the agency Blue Tusker, pretty much any social channel you want. So me personally, it's at Andrew Math. The agency, it's at Blue Tusker. And then of course, bluetusker.com, or they can email me at andrew at bluetusker.com. And then on January 25th, we are actually doing a virtual event specific to these automated flows and how to set them up. And then the technical side of things, because both Google and I think Outlook or someone else are doing some a real big uh, change where setting up like all your technical stuff is really important. So we're going to dig into that as well. Um, so they can also join us there and then just riddle us with questions at that event as well. Cool, cool. Great, great. So so we'll make sure to, you know, uh, point them to the right direction, you know, in order to join this webinar. And so thank you very much, Andrew, for sharing your your knowledge. I really appreciate you coming on, on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, guys, remember the key to success is to emulate the best. So take home the tips that Andrew just shared with you and uh, start implementing it in your business. And uh, you you will find, you know, that email marketing might be like a really powerful weapon into your marketing arsenal. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed your enjoyed this um, content today. And uh, I wish you have a productive week. See you next time. Bye. Hey, entrepreneurs. I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.